everybody. My name is Sarah Homan. I'm a senior emergency management planner with Spin Global. I want to talk to you today about deliberate planning in a COVID environment. First, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been working in emergency management planning for over 15 years. Some of you may recognize me from the work that I've done um, with New Madrid. Um, I've worked in four FEMA regions and countless states. Um, so if I look familiar, um, you probably see me doing some New Madrid projects. Most notably was one of the projects that we did in FEMA Region 7. We did a rewrite, which was a joint operation plan between the state of Missouri and FEMA Region 7 in Kansas City. One of the most exciting things about that project was when I came on board, we had a very limited amount of time to get our work done. So myself as a senior lead and my mid-level planner, we worked together to find a really collaborative way of getting through a lot of material in a very short period of time. We brought people into the physical office with us and we sat and did real time editing and planning with stakeholders and partners. This gave them a real authentic voice and buy-in in a product that they really hadn't been represented in before. Um, so this carries over into being forced into a virtual environment. So I really do enjoy meeting one-on-one -on -one with our stakeholders, our partners, our states, and meeting with folks that are underrepresented. Um, and so what has a virtual environment done for planning? Well, we have fully embraced collaborative planning. We can still bring people in. We use things like Teams and we use Zoom to reach out and still do that type of planning that we did in Region 7 that was so incredibly successful. Uh, after I left um, that project, I moved on to the state of Illinois where I worked in the interagency um, strategic planning cell, the ISPC at IEMA. Um, in their State Emergency Operations Center. While I was working there, we were activated to COVID um, in, I believe it was late February um, of 2020. We had to go into a fully virtual planning um, effort to continue the work that we were doing. We were tasked with updating over 300 state um, uh, boards, um, agencies and commissions, continuity of operations plans um, that was directed to us by the governor. So we worked with uh, folks virtually uh, every single day, all day, by phone, by email, and during um, when we first implemented Teams and working through that process. So bringing in something new like Teams during a pandemic was a challenge, but in the end, when we really adopted it and understood it, man, was it such a great benefit. So now that I've completed that task and I've now moved as a senior lead planner task lead in Region 5 in Chicago, Illinois, I'm currently working on the Biological Incident Annex. What makes our annex kind of unusual is we are the first fully virtual planning effort. I have um, had a lot of fun, a lot of success on this project, and I'm going to share a couple technical things with you that we've done differently. One, if you're having problems on your project like I did at the beginning of mine, it was because we weren't talking enough. You really can't communicate enough. And I know it sounds a little cliche to say communication is key, but communication is key. There's a reason why people say that. So we're not talking for talking's sake. Teams offers a lot of different varieties for you uh, as far as like you can have scheduled meetings. You can invite people into those meetings. You can use the chat feature, which we use all the time. You can also text. You can also pick up a phone. I know some folks don't like to do that, but it's still a nice way to connect, hear people's voices. Also be mindful of, of other people's abilities to get into Zoom. And some folks who are with FEMA, we all know the cer there's certain challenges with interacting on Teams and using our FEMA laptops. So always keep those things in mind. One thing that we like to do with our collaborative planning team, since our six states here in Region 5 um, are all um, very much involved in the vaccine rollout and um, other COVID operations, um, we try to be very respectful of everyone's time. 
Um, time is probably the most valuable thing there is right now. There's just not enough of it. So what we do is when we have our collaborative planning team, our CPT meetings once a month, we use the bottom line upfront or bluff method to getting information to our members. So we hit those highlights up front. We have a quick Q&A and then people who need to drop off the line to continue on with something else are able to do so. So what would naturally happen after a meeting wraps up where folks kind of mill around and we have conversations offline or they're able to ask more in-depth questions, we provide that in, in where we just hang out in our Zoom and folks can ask those types of questions. We get some great follow-up stuff and uh, it's a little more of a, of a casual setting and it's something that's worked for us. So maybe when you conclude your meetings, just allow people to kind of hang out and ask those questions that they maybe didn't feel that they could ask um, during your presentation. So um, I wanna make sure I hit all my notes here. Um, I wanna talk about the benefits of virtual planning. So a lot of folks have said you can't plan in a virtual environment. Well, we're proving them wrong. So one of the things that Spin Global actually has taught me as a planner who's always been um, working in an office, in a working environment that is not virtual, is that you can create that sense of familiarity, friendship, and, um, and, and just trust in your, in, in, your, in your teams. And the way that we do that is we have conversations that aren't always revolving around work. So right now in Region 5, you know, we have a morning call where everyone just kind of does a check-in, which has been really, really beneficial in getting to know our FEMA fits out in the States and the other FEMA planners who work in the Region 5 office. It's been of great benefit. Also, we have contract support that we are able to access from across the country. We have planners and we have contract support that are located on the East Coast, the West Coast, and of course, right here in the Midwest. So there is a lot that you can do virtually. And honestly, you can tap into a talent pool of folks that have just a myriad of, of different skill sets without requiring them to move. Planning is possible virtually, and we are proving that every day in Region 5. So I'd like to thank you for um, giving me your time and attention today. I know how important um, that is. And if you have anything that you would, any, any follow-up questions or, or, or anything at all, my contact information will be listed. And I thank you again for your time. Again, I'm Sarah Homan with Spin Global, and thanks for coming.